Welcome to the Nightclub, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. This past weekend, I was at the No Name Nationals, and I seem to have found a trend that was going on is that more and more people are actually switching over to turbochargers, whether that's turbochargers with an EFI application or turbochargers with the blow through carburetor application, just like I have here. There seems to be more and more people going that way. And so, in this video, I'm going to go over why the stroker kit is, in all sense and purposes, basically dying, and why turbochargers are basically taking over the first reason is probably the most important reason that is cost if you guys look on google the cheapest stroker kits they can find are in the ranges of 800 a thousand and twelve hundred dollars and that being chevy ford and dodge respectively if you guys wanted to copy my exact build it would probably cost you in the range of twenty nine hundred dollars when it's all said and done that being said i ended up going with a little bit more premium parts for example a lot of people when they go turbo they don't run the air filter they don't run uh, uh, braided uh, AN lines, they don't use USA made fittings, uh, they don't use fancy gauges, they don't go and pick up an alcohol demon carburetor. They, there's a lot of things that you could shortcut, maybe just switch over to like push lock and rubber hose instead of using all these fancy connectors. And when you do stuff like that, it actually brings down the total substantially over a thousand dollars. We're looking at just under seventeen hundred dollars to turbocharge basically any V8 engine that would include like the turbocharger, the piping, the fittings, the hoses, uh, the exhaust pipe that you're going to use to route all the way across the v-bands all the essential stuff that you need to run a blow through setup on a v8 engine it's probably going to run you about seventeen hundred dollars after it's all said and done and that's using all of the cheaper option materials on top of the stroker kits you also have machine costs most of us don't have a way to machine our own blocks so we have to go and have those sent out if you do something basic and you just have the cylinders honed out to the next size over maybe it's just going to cost you 100 bucks but most of the time when people are trying to build a stroker kids they tend to go on a higher end of things so they end up having the blocks decked they have the crank line honed and most oftentimes the machine shop is the one who assembles a motor for you in the first place and when you do something like that it can range somewhere from 800 to about 1200 dollars that's about how much the machining costs in my area so you take the 800 from the small block chevy stroker kit and the 800 from the machine costs that's 1600 dollars once you add in all the gaskets and everything that you're going to want to put the motor together you're right there at seven seventeen hundred dollars exactly as you were with the turbocharger but there's a couple key differences that differentiate that from a turbo build and the first one is that the motor doesn't necessarily have to leave the car at all if you have enough space or you're very good at fabricating you can probably install the entire turbo kit and you won't even have to take the valve covers off to move anything the only thing you have to do is just start messing with the headers or the stock exhaust manifolds maybe take off your factory exhaust and use that for the crossover there's a lot of ways you can do it and that's why so many people are actually going in that direction because it's just so easy to just buy the parts that you need and just throw them on and get going the second thing is that you don't actually have to do anything to the block itself naturally i'm going to recommend that you at least want to switch out the valve springs maybe keepers and retainers while you're at it just to make sure your valve train stays in place because because if you're adding any kind of performance modifications you guys are going to be revving it up i know you guys will so at the very least maybe you're not going to switch out the cam on a turbo setup but definitely Definitely switch out the valve springs keepers and retainers just to make sure you have something solid if you are building something like an LS then all you have to do is switch out the springs the keepers and the retainers seem to hold up pretty well after you take care of the valve train on a stock engine you don't even have to change out the camshaft if you don't want to if you want to leave the stock camshaft in there just so you can take advantage of the sheer amount of torque that the stock cam brings regardless of what motor it is as soon as you put the turbocharger on and you start adding boost you just need to add more boost in order to reach the target horsepower number that you're looking for but you don't necessarily have to do anything else to the bottom end as long as your valve train can hold it your mild engine that used to only rev up to 4500 can suddenly rev up to 6500 and, and still have a nice torque curve and make plenty of power versus a stroker kit where you can't really take advantage of an na combination if you were using the stock cam the stock cam for na applications they don't produce nearly enough horsepower but they give you an ample amount of torque so maybe you take off fairly easily but in order to keep that vehicle moving you need to move a lot of air it doesn't matter if you have a nice set of heads and a, a nice intake and a nice carburetor if the camshaft's not big enough or you don't have enough duration to get the airflow in and out of the motor you're not going to make the gains that you want to 
It's not uncommon to see someone build a basically a brand new motor, put in a stock replacement or stock style camshaft, and only make maybe 100 or 150 horsepower more than what they had before. Maybe they started off at 200 and now they're making 350 at the wheels. But 1800 horsepower for 150 horsepower to the wheels doesn't seem like a very good trade off. That being said, on a turbo motor, if you want more power, you just keep turning up the boost. You can either invest in an electronic wastegate controller or you can add heavier duty springs to the wastegate in order to increase the amount of pressure. On my combination, I'm running 12 pounds of boost, but my kit came with extra springs so I can run another five or eight pounds of boost and in one afternoon I can go from 400 to 600 horsepower no problem. Turbocharged engines also tend to run cooler because they're not running super high compression because they're not running on a radical cam and they're not doing anything crazy on the bottom end. The heat produced at low RPM low load is actually very minuscule if not almost identical to a stock motor. So the stock cooling system for the most part can handle the cooling of a turbocharged engine. That being said, if you have like a very radical combination, you might have to upgrade your cooling system. But for the most part, the stock cooling system is more than enough to cool down a turbo motor. A stroker tends to have more problems within the cooling department because you are taking an engine that had a cooling system designed for it and now you're making it another 10, 20, 30% larger. Oftentimes I see that stroker motors have a hard time cooling down. They have a hard time making back-to-back -back runs. So you can't really rely on the stock cooling system to cool your engine down. You're probably gonna wanna hose off the radiator, get those temps down and get it ready for the next course. Whereas a turbo motor, you can literally just leave it idling and the stock cooling system will cool down everything for you. By the time you get back to your vehicle to go race, it's at normal operating temperature. The turbo is nice and warm and you're ready to make your next hit. Everything isn't sunshines and rainbows with turbochargers though. There are some detriments. The first one being the amount of space that a turbocharger takes up. You need room for the cold side. You need room for the hot side. You need room for the downpipe. You need plumbing for the wastegate. You need to run more hoses. You need to run a drain line. You need to run a feed line. There's a lot of stuff you have to do manually in order to get it to work that's why people tend to stay away especially when it's in smaller cars but that doesn't mean that it has never been done i've seen a lot of cars that were not really designed to even carry v8s now have a v8 with a turbocharged system but you need to be someone or have someone available that's very skillful at fabricating whatever you're going to need to get everything exactly where it's supposed to be because if you're off by a couple inches the next part that you're going to put on might not fit anymore so you're going to have a lot of problems there the second problem would be your fuel system typically on a stroker motor especially an old school one that uses a mechanical fuel pump you can just buy a higher performance fuel pump slap it on run the stock lines that you were running before and then go to town on a blow through application, you're going to need a fuel pump that can produce higher pressures than what the mechanical fuel pump can do. I've seen basic performance mechanical fuel pumps put out about 10 PSI. I've seen high performance ones that run off of a pulley. Those are closer to like six, seven, eight hundred dollars you could just run a stock style mechanical fuel pump and install a regulator on it to make sure your pressure is where it needs to be in order to feed the motor as the motor revs up it'll start producing more and more fuel as long as your fuel pump is rated to the gallons per hour required to run your motor on a blow through carbureted application the problem is that because you are pressurizing the carburetor the fuel pressure going into the carburetor has to be higher than the air pressure produced by the turbo basically for every pound of boost you need one extra pound of fuel pressure to maintain the same fuel pressure inside the carburetor for example if you're supposed to be running six psi on your carburetor you're running 15 pounds of boost that's 15 plus six you need 21 psi of fuel pressure in order to prevent your carburetor from leaning out on the top end because most mechanical fuel pumps can't produce that that kind of pressure most people decide to go with an electronic style fuel pump maybe an in-tank style fuel pump or a surge tank and that just adds a little bit more expense to the situation for my particular build i did go with an efi style tank and i went with a return style fuel pressure regulator it takes a pump that produces 60 psi and i can dumb it down to zero psi one two three four five or six psi my fuel pressure regulator is also boost reference which means that once everything's under boost the fuel pump will We'll add one psi of fuel per pound of boost to be able to maintain that pressure 
Like I said before, that's not a problem that the stroker guys have, but once you buy the appropriate parts, you don't have to worry about that on a turbocharged application. It's almost set it and forget it. Just make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be and you add the proper gauge to your fuel rail, kind of like the one that I have there. And the last reason why turbo motors are better than stroker motors is because any engine can be a turbo engine, but not every engine can be a stroker engine. What I mean by that is, if the aftermarket does not have rods, pistons, or a crank for your particular engine, you are kind of out of luck unless you know a machine shop that can machine existing parts to fit your particular combination. On the flip side, if you have some sort of obscure combination like a Hyundai or a Kia or a Geo Metro and you really want to produce a lot of power, maybe you want to build a sleeper, if you want to put more power in, as long as you have the skills, you can go ahead and install a turbocharger on any engine that you want want and you're going to produce essentially whatever horsepower the bottom end will take if it'll take 600 horsepower you're going to produce 600 horsepower the only limit of power is what the block can take once you start exceeding that power you're going to have problems you're going to start breaking stuff but hopefully if you can keep your power levels just under the limit you're going to be a very very happy camper and once you go ahead and set your engines up to take higher amounts of boost like adding ring gap and and maybe installing steel shim head gaskets instead of composite ones, you can reach upwards of 30, 35 PSI without any problems. The purpose of this video isn't really to stir up any kind of pots. I'm just giving out my opinions and what I've been noticing as to be an actual trend. There's a lot of people that get upset when people turbocharge their motors because they think that strokers are pretty much the only way to go. And for a long time they were, turbochargers were kind of unreliable and poorly built. Nowadays, even the Chinese ones are in fairly good shape. So this is just food for thought. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.